Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. As we continue with part five, the philosophy of the Persians, from the philosophy of fire by R. Swinburne Clymer. The philosophy of the Persians. As a great general principle, the initiated, as do all the members of the secret schools of the present, designated the soul of fire, called from the eternal ocean of light. In regard to the supernatural, using the word in its widest sense, it may be said that all the difficulty in admitting the strange things told us lies in the non-admission of an internal causal world as absolutely real. It is said in intellectually admitting because the influence of the arts proves that man's feelings always have admitted and do still admit this reality. The Persian philosophy of vision is that it is the view of objects really existing in interior light, which assuming form not according to arbitrary laws, but according to the state of mind. This interior light unites with exterior light in the eye and is thus drawn into a sensual or imaginative activity. But when the outward light is separated, it reposes in its own serene atmosphere. It is then in this state of interior repose that the usual class of religious or what are called inspired visions occur. It is the same light of eternity so frequently alluded to in books that treat of mysterious objects. The light revealed to Pimanda, Zoroaster, and all the sages of the East as the emanation of the spiritual sun. Bowman writes of it as his divine vision of contemplation and Molinos in his spiritual guide, whose work is the ground of quietism. Quietism being the foundation of the religion of the people called Friends or Quakers, as also of the other mystic or meditative sects. We enlarge from a very learned, candid, and instructive book upon the occult science. Regard fire then with other eyes than with those soulless, incurious ones with which thou hast looked upon it as the most ordinary thing. Thou hast forgotten what it is, or rather thou hast never known. Chemists are silent about it, or may we not say that it is too loud for them? Therefore shall they speak fearfully of it in whispers. Philosophers talk of it as anatomists' discourse of the continents or the parts of the human body, as a piece of mechanism, wondrous though it be. Such the wheels of the clock, say they in their ingenious expounding of the whys and the wherefores, and the mechanics and the mathematics, of this mysterious thing with a supernatural soul in it called world. Such is the chain, such are the balances, such the larger and the smaller mechanical forces, such the time blood, as it were, that is sent circulating through it, such is the striking with an infinity of bells. It is made for man, this world, and it is greatly like him, that is mean, they would add. Note the goings of the fire as he creepeth, serpentineth, riseth, slinketh, broadeneth. Note him reddening, glowing, whitening, tremble at his face, dilating at the meaning that is growing into it to you. See that spark from the blacksmith's anvil, struck as an insect out of a sky containing a whole cloud of such. Rare locusts of which Pharaoh and the cities of the plain read of old the secret. One, two, three sparks and dozens come. Faster and faster the fiery squadrons follow until in a short while a whole possible army of that hungry thing for battle, for food for it, fire, glances up but is soon warned in again. Lest acres should glow in the growing advance. Think that this thing is bound as in matter chains. Think that he is outside of all things and deep in the inside of all things and that thou and thy world are only the thing between and that outside and inside are both identical. Couldst thou understand the supernatural truths, reverence fire for its meaning and tremble at it, though in the earth it be chained and the foot of the archangel Michael like upon the dragon be upon it. Avert the face from it as the magi turned, dreading and as the symbol before it bowed askance. So much for this great thing, fire. Observe the multiform shapes of fire, the flame wreaths, the spires, the stars, the spots, the cascades, and the mighty falls of it, where the roar, when it grows high in imperial masterdom, is that of Niagara. Think what it can do, what it is. Watch the trail of sparks, struck as in that spouting arch from the metal shoes of the trampling horse. It is a letter of the great alphabet. The familiar London streets even can give the Persians God, Though in thy pleasures and in thy commerce operations thou so oft forgettest thine own God. Whence liberated are those sparks, as stars afar off of a whole sky of flame, sparks deep down in possibility, though close to us, great in their meaning, though small in their show. As distant single ships of whole fiery fleets animate children of in thy human conception a dreadful, but in reality a great world, 
of which thou knowest nothing. They fall foodless on the rejecting barren and on the outside the coldest stone. But in each stone, fence flinty and chilling as the outside is, is a heart of fire to strike at which is to bid gush forth the waters as it were of every fire like waters of the rock. Truly out of sparks can be displayed a whole acreage of fireworks. Forests can be conceived of flame, palaces of the fire, grandest things, soul things, last things, all things. Wonder no longer then if rejected so long as an idolatry. The ancient Persians and their masters, the Magi, concluding that they saw all in this supernaturally magnificent element, fell down and worshipped it, making it the visible representation of the very truest. But yet in man's speculation, and in his philosophers, nay, in his commonest reason, impossible God. God being everywhere and in us, indeed us, in the God-lighted man, and impossible to be contemplated or known outside, being all. Lights and flames and the torches, as it were, of fire, all fire in this world, the last background on which all things are painted, may be considered as lancets of another world, the last world, circles, enclosed by the thick walls, which, however, by the fire are kept from closing, of this world. As fire and brandishes, will the walls of this world wave and, as it were, undulate from about it. In smoke and disruption or combustion of matter, we witness a phenomenon of the burning as of the edges of the matter rings of this world, in which world is fire, like a spot, that dense and hard thing, matter holding it in, oxygen, which is the finest of air, and is the means of the quickest burning out or the supernatural in this world, exhilaration of animal life or extenuation of the solid and above all, the heightening of the capacity of the human as being the quintessence of matter. This oxygen is the thing which feeds fire the most overwhelmingly, nor would the specks, spots and stars of fire stop in this dense world medium. In this tissue or sea of things, could it farther and farther fasten upon and devour the solids eating, as it were, through them. But as this thick world is a thing the thickest, it presses out, thrusts or gravitates upon and stifles in its too great weight and conquers not only that liveliest, subtlest, thinnest element of the solids, the finest air by whatever chemical name, oxygen, azote, azone or whatnot, it may be called, which in fact is merely the nomenclature of its composition, the naming of the ingredients which make the thing, but not the thing. The denseness of the world not only conquers this, we repeat, but so to figure it, matter stamps upon, effaces and treads out fire, which else would burn on back as in the beginning of things or into itself, consuming as in its great revenge of anything being created other than it, all the mighty worlds which in creation were permitted out of it. This is the teaching of the ancient fire philosophers re-established and restored to the days of comprehension of them in the conclusions of the Rosicrucians of later times who discovered the eternal fire, also found God in the immortal light. See divine alchemy for the mystery of fire sex. There are all grades or graduations of the density of matter, but it all coheres by the one law of gravitation. Now, this gravitation is mistaken for a force of itself when it is nothing but the sympathy or the taking away of the supposed thing between two other things. It is sympathy or appetite seeking its food or as the closing together of two things. It is not because one mass of matter is more ponderable or attractive than another out of our senses and in reality, but that they are the same with different amounts of affection and that like seeks like, not recognizing or knowing that between. Now this thing which is, as it were, slipped between and which we strike into show of itself or into fire, surprised and driven out of its ambush, is fire. It is as the letter by which matter spells itself out, so to speak. Now matter is only to be finally forced asunder by heat, flame being the bright, subtle something which comes last and is the expansion, fruit, crown or glory of heat. It is the vivid and visible soul, essence and spirit of heat the last evolvement before rending and before the forcible closing again of all the center speeding weights or desires of matter. Flame is the expanding out or even exploding flower to this growing thing. Heat, it is at the bubble of it, the fruit to which before we have likened it, or seed in the outside hand upon it. Given the supernatural flora, heat is as the gorgeous plant and flame the glorifying flower. And as growth is greater out of the greater matrix or matter of growing, 
So the thicker the material of fire, as we may roughly figure it, though we hope we shall be understood, so the stronger shall be the fire, and of necessity the fiercer will it be perceived to be, result being according to power. Thus we get more of fire, that is heat, out of the hard things, there being more of the thing fire in them. But fire disjoints, as it were, all the hinges of the house, laps out the coherence of it, sets ablaze the dense thing, matter, makes the dark metals run like waters of light, conjures the black devils out of the minerals, and to our astonishment shows them much libeled, blinding, angel white. By fire we can lay our hands upon the solids, part them, powder them, melt them, fine them, drive them out to more and more delicate and impalpable texture, firing their invisible molecules or imponderables into clouds, into mist, into gas, out of seeing into smelling, out of smelling into nothing, into real nothing, not even into the last blue sky. These are the potent operations of fire, the crucible into which we cast all the worlds and find them in their last evolution, not even smoke. These are physical and scientific facts which there can be no gainsaying, which were seen and found out long ago, ages ago, in the reveries first and then in the practice of the great magnetists, Rosicrucians, and those who are called the fire philosophers, of whom we have spoken before. What is that mysterious and inscrutable operation, the striking of fire from flint? Familiar as it is, who remarks it? Where in that hardest, closest pressing together of matter, where the granulation compresses, shining even in its hardness into the solidest lamini of cold, darkest blue and streaky, core-like, agate resembling white, lie the seeds of fire, spiritual flame seeds to the so stony fruit? In what folds of the flint, in the block of it, in what invisible recess, speckled and spotted in what tissue, crouch the fire sparks? To issue in showers on the stroke of iron, on the so sudden clattering as of the crowbars of man, on its stony doors, stone carving the thing fire unseen, as its sepulchre, stroke warning the magical thing forth, Whence comes that trail of fire from the cold bosom of the hard, secret, unexploding flint? Children as from what hard, rocky breast, yet hiding its so sacred, sudden fire birth? Who and what science philosopher can explain this wondrous darting forth of the hidden something which he shall try in vain to arrest, but which, like a spirit, escapes him? If we ask what fire is of the man of science, they are at fault. They will tell us that it is a phenomenon, that their vocabularies can give no further account of it. They will explain to us all that can be said of it, that it is a last affection of matter to the results of what in the world of man they can only testify, but of whose coming and of whose going, of the place from whence it came and the whereabouts to which it goeth, they are entirely ignorant and would give a world to know. The foregoing, however feebly expressed, are a few of the views of the Rosicrucians respecting the nature of this supposedly familiar but yet puzzling thing, fire for the inner mystery of the fire philosophy of the Rosicrucians see divine alchemy. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.